Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we will talk about a very very interesting topic, the balance and gait. The balance and gait concepts of motor system part 15. Balance. How are we able to balance ourselves? What are the systems which are required for a proper good balance? Balance depends on three systems. One, the vestibular system. Two, the somatosensory system that is the proprioceptive and tactile third visual impulses so if three systems are working well and in unison we have a perfect balance but even if two of the three systems are intact patient has a reasonable amount of balance so if three systems are functioning well they'll have a perfect balance but even two systems are functioning well there'll be a reasonable amount of good balance but if only one system is functioning or no system is functioning patient will lose balance so this is the principle of Rombach's test. Rombach's test in patients with somatosensory involvement, example, tabis dorsalis, one system is already gone. That is the somatosensory system. And, and then asking the patient to close the eyes, we are removing the second system of visual impulses, which help in balance. And therefore, the patient has got only one system, that is the vestibular system, and the patient falls, loses balance. So this goes to show that three systems if are functioning well they'll have a perfect balance if two systems are functioning well also they'll have a reasonable balance but less than two systems they will lose balance that is the principle of rombox test so rombox test in patients with somatosensory involvement example tabis dorsalis asking the patient to close the eyes the second system of visual impulses which help in balance is removed and the patient falls loses balance now let's talk about gait, the pattern of walking. By looking at gait, the pattern of walking, clinically itself we can make a certain diagnosis. For example, if a person has got circumduction gait, it is hemiplegia. Circumduction gait, they walk like this, a pronated hand, a flexed pronated hand with a wrist drop and then walks with encircling of the lower limb is known as circumduction gait. This we see in hemiplegia. But what is the mechanism of circumduction gait? Though the corticospinal tract supplies all the muscles on the opposite side, it has got a proclivity of certain muscles of the upper limb and the lower limb. For example, in the upper limbs, we can remember it with an acronym DATES. D-A-T-E-S. So it supplies deltoid, which is an abductor. D-A. T is triceps. E is extensors of the wrist, extensors of the finger and external rotators of the shoulder and finally S is supinator. So dates D-A-T-E-S. So if deltoid is affected, they cannot abduct. So it will be adducted. So A is again abductor. They cannot abduct. It is adducted. T is triceps. So they cannot extend. So it is flexed. E is extensors of the wrist and extensors of the finger. So they cannot extend. So it falls off external rotators of the shoulder are affected so they will have internal rotation and finally s is for supinator supinator is affected so pronator takes over so they'll have a pronated hand so in the upper limbs they have the characteristic posture in the upper limb it is because of the involvement of certain muscles preferentially by the corticospinal tract remember the acronym dates d a t e s d for delta a is for abductor t is for triceps e is for extensors of the wrist extensors of the finger and external rotators of the shoulder and finally s is supinator likewise corticospinal tract has got a predilection for certain muscles in the lower limbs though it supplies all the muscles of the lower limbs it has got a predilection for certain muscles of the lower limb again we can remember the acronym hd h is for hip flexors that is iliopsoas is affected and h is hamstrings so flexion of the knee is affected and d is for dorsiflexors so they cannot dorsiflex it is plantar flexed so hip flexors is affected, hamstrings are affected, dorsiflexors are affected. So there is plantar flexion. 
so it hits the ground so to clear off they have to encircle and walk which resembles a characteristic circumduction gate so this is the mechanism for circumduction gate in hemiplegia corticospinal tract though it supplies all the muscles on the opposite side it has got a predilection for certain muscles in the upper limbs and certain muscles in the lower limb so in the upper limb remember that acronym dates deltoid abductor triceps extensors of the wrist extensors of the fingers and external rotators of the shoulder and s is for supinator lower limb remember the acronym hd h is for hip flexors hamstrings and d is for dorsiflexors so next gate what we are going to see is parkinson's gate disease so they have a festinian gate they have a stooped posture they have a short stepping gait third is tabis dorsalis tabis dorsalis posterior column is affected so the proprioception is affected they cannot feel the hardness of the floor because the joint position sense is affected so they have to stamp to feel the hardness of the floor so this is known as stamping gait stamping gait due to posterior column disease then we have a high stepping gait a high stepping gait is due to common peroneal nerve palsy common peroneal nerve supplies the dorsiflexors of the foot so the dorsiflexors of the foot is affected there is foot drop so to clear the foot drop they have to take high steps and walk so common peroneal nerve palsy affecting the dorsiflexors will cause a high stepping gait because of the foot drop and then we have myopathic gait or waddling gait in the myopathy especially the gluteus medius muscle abductor is affected they'll have a waddling gait what is the function of the abductor the gluteus medius when we take when we walk the gluteus medius fixes the pelvis on the stamping leg so the pelvis on the swing leg is elevated so the gluteus medius when it contracts it puts pressure on the leg which is on the which is the stamping leg and it elevates the pelvis of the of the leg which is in the swing phase so it becomes like this and therefore when the gluteus medius gets affected it cannot contract and the pelvis on the opposite side this is not lifted it falls so when it falls you call that as a waddling type of gait so it is because of the gluteus medius weakness and this we call it as a trendelenburg sign and then finally we have the frontal lobe gait that is a magnetic gait they have a tendency for the feet to stick to the floor so frontal lobe when it gets affected they have magnetic gait on the bed they are able to move the lower limbs but when they are asked to walk on the actual floor they are not able to walk it they feel as if the limbs are stuck to the floor known as magnetic gait which we see in the frontal lobe so these are the various gaits by looking at it we can make a clinical diagnosis circumduction gait in hemiplegia festinating gait in parkinson disease stamping gait example tabis dorsalis high stepping gait in common peroneal nerve palsy gluteus medius weakness causing waddling gait and the frontal lobe uh, disease pathology causing the magnetic gait so i hope you have really enjoyed listening to this wonderful lecture on balance and gait the other important concepts of clinical neurology like history taking general examination pertaining to neurology neurologic examination hemiplegia and paraplegia i have put it in points in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology written by me dr s srinivas so if interested this book could be purchased this book will be very useful for clinical exams the other important concepts i put in a book called focused neurology in a question answer format so all the important concepts of neurology i have tried to cover this will be very useful for oral exams this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts on balance and gait if you have enjoyed it please like share the link but please subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my web page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye